Hey, oh. it works. Hi, it works. Okay. <laughs> I'm like sitting here like crossing my fingers. I'm like, please work. <laughs> So you can I hear can. me fine? Yeah, we're all okay. good. We're all good. Good. Your your hair is so long. I love I it. Well, I, it needs to be cut. <laughs> it's getting... I, I, I feel yeah. you. I feel you. It's, it's, it's in the bun. It's contained at the moment. Um, thank you so much for doing this with me. I really appreciate oh, sure. it. I know you've, you've probably got a busy schedule. Um, so I really do appreciate you doing oh. this with me. Sure. Now, Fridays, I leave a little more open. So this was perfect. Perfect time to just chat with a friend. <laughs> good. 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 Um, and your trip home was oh, easy yeah. breezy. Yeah. You got yeah. Home it was great. Yep. I, now, now, I have to ask you, are you are you OK with the, the poll results? Oh, the, the shells? <laughs> still recovering. <laughs> no. <laughs> the funny thing is I knew I was going to lose. It was just like inevitable. Like it didn't matter what I did, but, um, cause my blog audience, while they, they love me, they love my mom even more, <laughs> so, which is fine. I love my mom too. So, um, yeah, it, and it's really, it really is all in good fun, but yeah, I was, I was pretty well, uh, spanked in that competition. <laughs> did a really good job and how she laid them all I know. out. I was like, oh, oh, she did. She killed it. She really did. <laughs> she really, she really did. Yeah. Um, do you, is your mom like very creative? Is that kind of where you get your creativity from or is it? So I, I say yes. Somewhere else? She says no. Okay. Um, <laughs> But my mom is, uh, she's very musical and she um, taught all of us in our family to play guitar. And oh, wow. um, we always sang as a family. We were like the Von Trapp family. We were like sang together in harmony and we all played our guitars and all that stuff. Uh, we would oh. play like recorder quartets. It's like a thing. There's actually like different size recorders anyway. Um, so we did all that stuff as a family. And I think the biggest thing is they just always encouraged us to try different things. So we did everything from like theater to tin punching to baseball to baton twirling to, wow. you know, I just did everything. And I was able to sort of find like, oh, well, this is what I like in this season. And then it was also okay to like, okay, well, now I'm not into that anymore. I, I want to try something else. So I think sometimes kids like have a have a knack for something and they get kind of like pegged in that like well you're an all-star baseball player so you need to play baseball and it's like well I don't know maybe I don't want to do that anymore maybe I want to try other things so my parents gave us a lot of space I don't know if it was like intentional or not or if it was just kind of this the accidental way it happened but gave both my brother and I a lot of space to to just experiment and explore. And um, they supported us even when we talked about doing jobs that are like not plan A jobs, you know, my degrees in musical theater. My brother did a lot of like tech work for theater. He's an improv piano player. He has a recording studio. So it's just like, and they never said like, oh no, you can't do that. That's not a real job. They just like said, okay, go for it, go do it. <laughs> That's, so, that's, so, that's so awesome. That's like you, you just, even though your, your, your mom would say, Oh, I'm not creative. She supported that. Yeah. And I for, think she's well. creative in like, she does music with children and she's incredibly okay. creative with like how she gets kids who are shy to sing and how she, you know, teaches them rhythm. So I think that, I think there's a mistake in looking at like, Oh, well she can draw that equals creativity or she can yeah. um, put colors together that equals creativity. And, and then like discounting things like, like, man, accountants have to be incredibly creative. <laughs> and, and we just don't like yeah. recognize that as like, there's creativity in, in designing a football play. There's creativity in, in any kind of problem solving. And so um, I think we need to kind of pull apart this idea of like all creativity is about art and is about this natural talent and all of that. It's just, it's just not. So I'm a big champion for everybody's creative. It's just we're creative in different ways. I, I agree. I mean, I, I also like even 
it's it's not so much that I need to paint. Sometimes I don't want to paint. Sometimes I want to cook a really good meal and just wing it and see what happens, you know, and, and there's creativity in that. And like you said, accounting and all that kind of stuff. I completely agree with you 100%. Yeah. Um, so I don't I don't know if your your people need an intro, but I would love to hear like a little bit of how Miss Mustard Seed came to be, kind of how that journey started. How did that start for you? So it started because um, we really needed money. <laughs> That's where it started from. And um, my husband's in ministry. He, at the time, he was a youth pastor. And usually you don't become a youth pastor if you, like, you know, are hoping to have a really fat retirement account or anything like that. So um, yeah. I had, I was at home with two small boys. They were four months old and almost two. So it's a stupid time to start a business. Like it just didn't make sense, but we really needed some money and we felt strongly that I should be home with the boys. And so um, I know not everybody can do that or wants to do that, but that's, that's just the path we chose. We felt like that was important. And so I, my mom encouraged me. She was the one who said, you know, well, you should start a business. You like, you know, you refinish furniture, you paint, you've helped people decorate, like you should do something with that. And so I started a business, just a really small, it was a decorative painting and mural business. And, you know, kind of, I kind of meandered along with that. I tried like painting ornaments at craft fairs. I tried refinishing furniture on commission for clients. I did um, mural work for houses in the area and businesses in the area. And I started selling out of a small shop and, and it was just kind of meandering along. And then um, one of my friends who was actually a former youth student in our youth group was studying graphic design and said, you should start a blog and, and I'll design it for you as a school project. And so, so she did that. I had never realized that there was this whole world of blogs. So I have to put this in context for everybody. So there was no Instagram. <laughs> there was no, like Facebook was still just like getting, hanging out with your college friends. Yeah. Um, there were no like algorithms in any of that. <laughs> YouTube was just like a baby. There was no Pinterest. So it's really like, yeah. I didn't even know there was this whole world of like creative people who were sharing on blogs, specifically in the home decor world. And I'm like, these are my people. I want to join in. And so I just started a blog and it's just been kind of a meandering journey since then. I've I've worked on my main specialty was furniture and refinishing furniture, upholstery. I did tutorials on YouTube and all of that stuff. I sold the pieces uh, in antique stores and at markets. And a few years ago, uh, we moved to Minnesota to a house that didn't have like a big studio space like I had in Pennsylvania. And my back was sore from all the furniture work. And so I sort of shifted gears. So that's kind of been the story of my business is like shifting gears, you know, and, and much like my childhood being okay with saying like, okay, this was great for a season. I loved it. Now I'm ready to to tackle something else. And that's led me to where I am now. And and so with your childhood being so supportive of of that transition, for you, was there kind of no anxiety with those transitions or did you feel a little uneasy at oh, times? There's, like how did that <laughs> There's always the anxiety with, with okay. changes like that. I think the biggest thing for me is not like if it was just me on my own changing, I wouldn't have a problem. I would just be like, all right, done with that, ready to move on. Like I'm pretty, I can like disconnect from things pretty, pretty easily. But um, I think it's when you're like taking a few thousand people along with you, I think that's tough. That then makes it, you know, and I still have people who say, oh, I miss the days when you do furniture. That was so fun. So, you know, it's always hard to change when you have a lot of people following along who maybe really fell in love with what you did at one season and now you're doing something different. Um, so I think the people who've been with me, I've been sharing online for almost 15 years. This summer it'll be 15 years. Um, wow. I think the people who are still with me and who've been with me since the beginning have learned like it's not about what I'm making or what I'm sharing. It's it's all this kind of message about um, just I want to encourage people to 
uh, nurture their creative soul to nurture things that they want to do with their life and with their spare time and all of that. And, um, and I want to, you know, offer some inspiration for that. And so it's just what I write about or what I talk about or what I'm working on just sort of changes depending on the season of life and my own creative journey. And, and for me personally, on the other end, I see that I'm inspired. Um, so I'm sure other people are. And I, I've seen you grow just with painting. You know, I mean, obviously the decor and all that kind of stuff, I kind of came in as you were starting to do more landscapes and oil painting work. And so I've seen that kind of progress over the last three or four years. And I've, I've noticed a big change and I, I love seeing that. And I love seeing how you're not afraid to do different things and throw it out there and see, see what happens. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> I love, I, I just love that. And that, and that to me oh, is inspiring well, is you. to just see how you're not afraid to do that. And so tell your mom that, tell your parents that the support they gave you trickled down yeah. <laughs> to everybody else. Like, I, I really, I really think that's because for me, I didn't get that mm. support. Like, this, it was kind of like an opposite thing. So I kind of have that battle of, I can do this and it's okay if I don't want to paint this anymore, I can do something else, you know? So to see that what what that has done for you is just it, it matters so much and i think that trickles down to everybody else so thank you for being that creative inspiration mm. for us um, and with that and you know i know we don't see much of your husband or, or, or family does he do you ever go okay i need you to to move this for me or, or do that? Or is it like you're all- No, all like, the no, time, all the time. I tell my kids, <laughs> so my boys, like I said, they were four months old and almost two when I started my business. And, um, oh yeah, someone asked a question about my name. I'll answer that. But um, I, I tell them now they're 15 and 17. And I'll tell them now, like, <laughs> guys, you were like born to move my furniture and you've gotten to that age now like I've done your diapers and I've fed you and all this stuff so that you can move my furniture so um so they do they will move my stuff um it, I was I was wondering I was like she's gotta she's gotta um, tell the boys like I need I need your help <laughs> yeah and they'll like now in this season they'll be models for me when I'm drawing they'll they've always kind of helped out in different ways so yeah they're supportive I just don't I don't share them online because that was never, I never wanted to be yeah. a mommy blogger. I never wanted to be yeah. like, here, let me just share everything about my personal yeah. life. I share a lot about myself and like my own things that I'm going through, but it's, it's very much as it relates to the world I share online. Um, I've always felt like, you know, I'm just not gonna, I'm not gonna share my kids in a way that they can't really consent to and yeah. so um so that's why you don't see them I do love them they're awesome they're very supportive but I just don't share them online they can do they can make the decision to do that when yeah. they want to but but I don't share them but someone asked about the name and yeah Miss Mustard Seed is a biblical reference to um moving mountains there's a verse that says um you know, if you say to this mountain, move from here to there, it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, I reverse that. But um, but it, it came because um, I started my business at a time when it just, it was a total step of faith. I'm at home with small kids. I have no business experience. I know nothing about taxes. I have zero capital. Like I don't even have money for groceries. I don't have capital to put in a business. Like it just, it just didn't make sense. I felt so out of my element, but there was this kind of this, um, you know, this feeling is the best way I can put it that it's like, this is a step of faith and you just need to do it and let it happen and work really hard. And, um, and then it's been something that's been a real blessing for me and for my family and for all of that. So. And, it, and it was the size of a mustard seed. Oh, yeah. And now <laughs> the, the things that came from that, it's, it's definitely, you could, I, I definitely see the, the reference there. So that's, that's amazing. That's beautiful. I, I love that. Uh, uh, 
I guess, and I guess I always just kind of assumed that was the, the reference, but yeah. thank you for clarifying. <laughs> Some people, um, I don't know, I get all kinds of questions about that. Like, is it like a health food thing? Is it, you know, I don't, but I, I never, now I will say again, like this was like over 15 years ago. So this was like, um, I was just going to have it be the, the web address, the URL, and it was really about availability. The business name was actually Mustard Seed Interiors, but that wasn't available. Okay. So my brother's like, why don't you do Miss Mustard Seed? It's, you know, it's, um, you want the .com. It says that, you know, the business is coming from you. It says it's a one, one woman show. Like it says a lot in that. And, but I never plan on it being like my Instagram handle and like what people called me. So always be careful about your name because you never know, <laughs> you never know how it's going to be used, but it's worked out. I just embrace it now. <laughs> do, do you ever, um, do people, do people call you yes. that now or do that? That's, it's kind of like this, is it like this other alter ego that you have or do you feel like? Yeah, it sort uh, of is like, actually when I wrote my first book, they were, putting it as like by Miss Mustard Seed. And I was like, I'd really like it to be <laughs> by Marion Parsons <laughs> because, you know, that's my name. This is just kind of an yeah. online thing. So they still put the name on Miss Mustard Seed name on there, but I was able to get it in my own name. So especially with artwork, I've really been trying to make it like, this is from the studio of Marion Parsons. Okay. This is, you know, and sign my art as such. And um, not that I want to like separate from the name, but I do want to make sure like I don't lose my myself in yourself. in that name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. I could it. It's um, obviously like I'm just Megan Gray, but I could imagine having those kind of two separate entities. If that's kind of like okay, I'm I'm a person. I'm not just right. I'm not just <laughs> this Miss mustard seed right. person so that's um it's definitely an interesting thing that you kind of have to balance for yourself but also does it make it easier for you to um like separate yeah like does it make so. it easier for you to, like if something doesn't if something doesn't isn't as as successful or whatever as the other thing like it's not it doesn't feel like as personal in a way. Does yeah, that help? I mean, I think it all feels personal to me in a, in a sense, okay. but I have, I, I think, and this is where like what you do when you're younger, really it all builds into you, even though it's like, well, maybe that didn't work out or didn't make sense. But, you know, my degree is in musical theater and a part of that education was, um, it was a class called audition techniques, but it was really about managing yourself as your product, because as, as an actor, that's what it is. You are your own product. And so I, I learned to, to do that. And I also learned about, you know, not taking it personally when you didn't get parts. Sometimes you didn't get parts because, you know, you're just like, I'm blonde. I, I'm very fair skinned. There are only so many parts that are going to make sense for me just because yeah. of how I look. So I'd always get like the ditzy best friend or the, you know, I'd, I had kind of these roles that I would get just because of, of how I looked. And so you just have to be okay with that. You just have to, you can't cry about every audition that you don't get. You have to learn to, to, you know, okay, they didn't want that product. And it doesn't mean that product's bad. It just means it wasn't right for, for that. So I think that that helped a lot with being able to say, you know, to kind of dust myself off when stuff doesn't work and just, you know, just come back with something else. And that, and, and you, you got that, you had that training in music, you're saying in music and theater. Yeah. That's where you yeah. Kind of... in, in musical theater. Um, I, I learned that. So it's like, I, I think I, so I'm always a real champion of when we have, we still work with teenagers and stuff like that. And when I have teenagers who are talking about wanting to get a degree in something like theater, that a lot of people say, that's a total waste of time. It's a, like, it's a useless degree. I'm like, well, wait a minute, hold on. I'm <laughs> like, there's a, there's a lot of value that you can get from that. Um, and I actually, I ended up working in the corporate world for about eight years before 
I became a stay at home mom and and having a theater degree served me very well. I was able to present myself well. I prepared people for interviews. I was, you know, it just, it just did a lot for yeah. me more than, yeah. you know, more than you would think. So, and I can, well, and I can tap even, dance. So there's, there's that. <laughs> I, I mean, I can't do that. So is it okay? So is there anything you can't do? Oh, there's a lot. There's a lot I can't do. <laughs> I hate taxes and accounting. Okay. I tell my accountant, okay. like, I hire you to do so you can just tell me what to do. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot that I can't do, of course. Um, I, and I think my downfall can be that I try to do too much because I like doing a lot of different things. So, um, you know, when I see people who are real specialists in something, I, I really admire that. I'm like, that takes so much persistence and patience and right. commitment and not being like, Ooh, I want to do this and this and this. <laughs> and, and I think that's just something I don't have. I just, so I I've come to terms with like, I'm always probably going to be a generalist and I'm never going to be like the best at something. I'll just be good at a lot of different things. And like, that's okay. <laughs> but, but, I, I, but I look at that and I think, you know, cause I don't, I don't really know where I fall in all of that. Um, I've tried to help myself to focus by going, okay, I just want to focus on, cause I had all the art supplies and I, I was like, you know what, this is just pulling me in so many directions and I want to learn how to oil paint. I'm just going to get rid of everything mm. else and just focus on the oil paint. because like, if it's there, I'm like a squirrel, like, Oh, let me try this. Let me try that. And then I don't sit and focus. But I think that what, what, how your brain works or how you work has created wonderful benefits just as much as somebody who can sit down and master something and like that would after a while i would be that would be it for me i couldn't sit there i know of some amazing artists who are very detail oriented and very focused and it's beautiful and it's wonderful yeah i just that's just not me it's not me and there's room for all of us <laughs> I'm there's like, room for I wanna, all of us. if i can't finish it within like yeah i've become more patient but you know, my wheelhouse, I think, for paintings is the one to two hour kind of range. And maybe doing two sittings that are one to two hours. And once I get yeah. past that point, I'm just like, uh, you know, I'm like, I'm getting too in the weeds. It's getting too, like, I'm feeling too critical of myself. It's not fun. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I, that's not And I don't want to mess it up. Right. I don't want to mess it up. I've got I'm like, no, I like where it's at. If I keep going, it's going to have to change into a completely different painting. Yeah. So I always think of it that way too. But I just want to go, go back to what you said about musical theater and how that prepared you. One, how it prepared you for Instagram and showing yourself out there, but also everybody should have that training. Mm -hmm. Think of every, if, if fine artists had that training, we would knowing like, hey, don't take it personal when a gallery, you're not the right fit for the gallery, you know, like all of those things. And I think that, like you said, there is value in that degree. And I think what you learn should be taught to everyone. But, yeah. So that's just my, I mean, I, I it, would make, it, would, it would make things easier. I I agree. I think there's a lot of valuable lessons to learn in, um, you know, in the worlds of music and, and theater and that sort of thing. Cause you know, you can't, you can't have, you know, seven girls playing Annie, you have one girl playing Annie. And when you have hundreds who audition, you have to be okay with, you know, I might not even get to be an orphan. I might not to get, you know, I, I might not even get a part. And, um, so I, I, I had to learn that pretty young. I started theater when I started auditioning when I was about uh, probably eight or nine was when I started auditioning for like for theater pro uh, programs and stuff. And, um, and I was fortunate to get really good roles. So when I started not getting roles, it was really disappointing. <laughs> um, but yeah, you just, I, you know, I started to learn like, well, it's, you know, you just have to be, be okay with a no and not let it crush you, you know, not let it, let it be, it's a no for this. 
it's not a no. Yeah, someone said there are no no small no, parts, no small, right? Small, Only yeah. small actors, no small parts, <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, yeah, it was funny. And I've had small parts. I've had to do like backstage work. I've, you know, so I've done everything from playing the lead to um, being told no and getting nothing. So, um, and did did you did you play in a in a production of I Annie? Did. I did. I did. And I was Annie. <laughs> you were Annie? I was, oh, yes. I yes. mean, how yeah. could you not be? Your hair. I was. Well, they know. had to dye it. So there, oh. I was a nine-year-old oh. with, um, dye, they had to dye it every week because it would fade. And um, it looked like a beautiful auburn under the lights, but in person it looked pink. So. <laughs> oh, no. um, how long did you, how long did you do that? How long were you? <laughs> How long was I mm -hmm. Annie or was yeah, yeah, how long were you Annie dyeing your hair? Oh, it I it was probably just a few weeks of a run. Um they they put they uh extended it a little bit cuz the shows were doing well, but um it but it was just a few weeks. But I've oh, I've had my hair black. I've had all sorts of <laughs> uh, you know, worn wigs. I've done I've done all of it. <laughs> so, it's, it's fun. It's kind of like you know, but I, I got to a point when I was in, um, you know, when my husband and I were kind of getting back in touch and he's in, he's in, um, so someone asked, was it at the totem pole? No, it was in Germany. It was at a theater in um, Bad Cannstatt, Germany for military families. And um, that's where I did Annie, but I did stuff in like Reston, Herndon, Virginia, and those areas. Oh. I did some theater there and um, I think the coolest thing I got to do was um, to be uh, so the Broadway tours don't travel with children because of just various reasons. So they do uh, they get what they call pickups at from local theaters. So I got to be a pickup in the Broadway tour of Evita when they came to Germany in the 80s. So that was pretty cool. I got to got to be in that like a big this big Broadway production and it was a lot of fun. So. But anyway, you know, I got to a point though where I'm like, you know what, I love this. Do I love it enough to like, you know, do theater my whole life and travel and maybe not have a lot of stability and not, you know, and I was like, no, I, that's not really what I want to do. I'd love to, you know, I still want to do creative stuff, but I don't think, I still love theater. I will, I'll sing with musical theater plays all the time and I still love it, but um, it's not what I wanted to do with my life, so. And then, you know, that uh, you answered my first question, basically, you know, you answered the question of your first time being creative, which, you know, it just seems like it's been your life. It, it has, like, I, I was trying to think about that and it's just like, it's just always been present. I mean, I've been yeah. singing in, you know, for church and for, you know, school since I was very little, um, probably three or four. And yeah. I've always loved dance and I've always just had a, just a super active imagination. Like, I didn't need toys. Just <laughs> let me go out in the yard and I'm going to set up a whole kitchen on the concrete bench in my grandparents' yard uh -huh. and I'm going to make, you know, cakes and I'm going to, you know, there was just always this whole world going on um, in my mind. <laughs> and so, so I think that's, that's why acting came out of that very easily, yeah. the, the whole pretending and, and stuff. But um, yeah, I just, I, I never remember not being creative, so I don't. I don't have that light bulb moment. Yeah. Was that somebody said something? I don't know. I'm gonna... Oh, <laughs> someone's saying my my pop up ads are hard to <laughs> on my blog. Yeah, you know what? I'll just say something real quick about that. This isn't what we're talking about, but. <laughs> Um, when I first started 15 years ago, ads were just like quiet, nice and quiet and simple on yeah. the sidebar. Um, the thing is though, most people were looking at the computer or looking at websites on their computer. Um, yeah. 
now, like even when I started my blog, we didn't have smartphones. And so having my site be one that could go mobile was something we had to transition through. And now because the majority of people are looking at the internet on a screen that's like this big, as opposed to one that's this big, guess what happens to the ads? Everything goes, <laughs> yep. There's Everything no room goes. for a sidebar. There's no, so the ads have to be integrated into the content. Otherwise it's not valuable to people. Yeah. And, um, and it costs a lot of money to have a website uh, when, when you have 15 years of content on it, all the photos, lots of traffic, yeah. it, it costs a lot of money to host it. So um, I, I would love, love to be ad free because it would look so much better, but I can't, I can't work for free. <laughs> so yeah. no, I so I'm that. sorry. Then, get, a, then, get an ad blocker if you need to. I tell people that. Like, if you just can't handle it, just get an ad blocker. And yeah. there you go. And then the, the other option to, like, make it so that you are, are gaining an income, it's like how much, like, it's like the acting. Like, do I really want to go that route or do I want to keep doing what I'm doing here? You know, do you want to have that creative time to paint <laughs> or do you want to have to now do some subscription based thing? Yeah. So yeah. it's a lot, it's not, it's not easy. It's, it's a lot of work going back and forth and deciding that. So getting to the yeah. painting, yes. one, one, your, you know, it started with your rabbit for me. Aww. Your rabbit was gorgeous and beautiful. And you know, I like dark and moody. So I, the and I think it's still in there, isn't it? I was gonna say. Well, I sold it. This yes. this one, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yes. this is still the original, but okay. um, but I have a okay. I have a buyer for it already. I finally decided I'd let it go. So you're gonna. Yeah. I, I I told I totally understood. I was like, no, she's like, that's keeper. Um, that for but your animals and the the dog the is that a pointer? Yeah. Is that a that's a pointer, right? That I just, you're the way you capture animals, because I, not me, I can't, like, if you're going to try likeness or people, or I, like, I'm not your girl, <laughs> uh, but your animals, I just see, I don't know, I see, do you have a dog? Do you I, have dogs? Do you have animals? I have a dog and two cats. I'm, okay. I'm more of a cat person okay, than a dog care. person, but I, I like dogs too, but I'm a cat person. <laughs> And so, so how, how are you, how, when did you first jump into oils and how do you feel about your animals? Cause I'm, I'm loving them. So well, I'm sure other people are. I started painting with oils about six years ago and it okay. started with Michelle Wooderson, who I think, you know, also on Instagram, um, she has done watercolors. I mean, she's, she's done it all. She's super creative. And she, I had taken a class from her on Jean Oliver's website, a watercolor class. And she put out on Instagram that she was going to, she wanted to learn oils and she was going to paint a hundred meadows. So she called it the hundred yeah. meadows project, painting a hundred landscapes essentially. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it with you. So I did. And I was terrified of oils. I was really scared of the cleanup. I was scared of like, it's going to be super fumey and stinky and all this stuff. And um, the first time I used oils on a palette, I didn't even like clean it. I just like left it and just let it dry because I just didn't even know what to do with it. But it was really helpful to do that, those hundred paintings and do it with friends so we could ask each yeah. other questions. Like, what do you do with your dirty paper towels? What do you, how do you clean up? What do you you know, I learned about toning a canvas, like all just all kinds of stuff. I learned a lot and I read a lot of books and, um, and I, I, I think I learned the most though, just through doing it. I just, I was very scared to put down paint. So it was super thin. And then I kind of got over that. And then I started putting down like, it was super impasto, <laughs> impasto, really thick. And then, um, it, you know, and then I had to kind of, I don't know, you know, you just find your, find your way as you like, okay, that green is like intense. It's in your face. We got to figure out how to do a better green, you know? Um, so I did that and then I just, I loved it and I wanted to keep going. So I did, uh, I did a hundred still life paintings and then I started doing some portraits. I kind of, as I do, 
Well, I just sort of, you know, went through the different um, subjects and different, you know, I've tried different palettes. I've learned from a lot of different um, living artists as well as, as some masters. And uh, I like learning from people who are highly technical, but I also like learning from people who are like very intuitive. So I can kind of take what works for me from both. And, um, but how I got into the animals, I think was really, because I love doing portraits, but I do not want to do commissioned portraits. Uh, maybe if the people are dead, then, then maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we can't, we can't go, that doesn't look like can't go, yeah, because like it's, it's such a, um, an interpretation of how you see them. And I think that yeah. we don't always see ourselves the way other people see us. And so I think it can be like a really tough thing. And even like John Singer Sargent, who's known as like one of the best portrait artists ever, um, had people return portraits and they didn't like them and didn't think they looked Could like them. Could you imagine? I know. Could you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> no, John Singer Sargent, I don't like this. I know. <laughs> um, and like Winston Churchill famously like threw a portrait that someone did of him who's like an incredible artist. I don't know the artist's name, I don't remember, but threw it on a fire and that like it's gone at months of work because he just didn't like the way it portrayed him. Oh. He didn't like the way the person saw him. And so that's so that's so much different th than like now as a photographer you take somebody's picture and they just don't share yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> just like delete it. It's like, oh phone. well at least they're not throwing my painting in the fire. Or we photoshop you know? it to death, you know? Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> Anyway, I, so I don't want to get into portraits, even though I love doing portraits. Yeah. So animals felt like a way, like I can do portraits, but you know, your cat's not going to have an issue if like they look chubbier than they like, or they, you know, I don't know, you made them look older or whatever. Um, but I, I can do what I enjoy about it is trying to capture their personality and trying to make them look like a, you know, like they're a living a thing, you know, living yeah. living um creature and not just like an object and yeah so i enjoy them but i but i enjoy landscapes too and i enjoy still life too and i you know so i don't i don't know if i'm ever going to be like this is my thing and that's all i'm ever going to paint i think i i enjoy i enjoy mixing it up and again i you know then i might be someone who's not known for anything specific um as far as like a, a genre of art but um, but but I'm okay with that. I would rather that than to feel like I'm producing the same, you know, same or similar things over and over again. I I, I like to kind of bounce between things, and I, you know, and I learn a lot from you know where with landscapes I can be looser. I can I can move things around. I can yeah. invent things. I can yeah. paint a landscape just from a really horrible blurry photo I took out of out of the car window. And then um, they, the trees don't yell at you when you make them look a little too fat right. or something. So it's, it's totally right. a, different, so a I, different realm. I, can, sure. I can play with that a little bit more. And then with the animals, I have to be a bit more tight and play with, you know, I have to make sure I'm capturing a likeness and a personality and stuff. But, but then that helps then when I go and I, I want to maybe do something a bit more structured, like trees that don't have leaves on them or... Um, I want to incorporate a building into the landscape and that needs to be a bit more, you know, specific. So I think they, you know, one discipline can help another. And um, I like to bounce around, especially if I'm feeling a little stuck or bored. And then usually when I come back to the thing I've, I felt stuck on, then I'm like, oh, there's, I have new tools to work with now. Yeah. And so now I'm ready to go. Now you see the growth. And I, I saw that you have now entered the world of abstract a little bit. How's that going? Yeah, it's fun. I mean, I've, I've done little, like I kind of tried some abstracts at one point and I'm just like, mm, not, it's just not for me. I'm not, it's not resonating with me. I'm not, I don't, I don't feel like I'm producing anything that I really feels like feels authentic to me, but I yeah. keep kind of coming back to it. Like I find a little bit of an interest there. And so um yeah so i've started i i was recently sick with two viruses 
back to back and in between I really wanted to paint and and I didn't feel like I had the capacity to do very much so I I yeah. worked on some abstracts and I, I just had a great time I kept going back to them as I wanted to play with paint and it was a lot of fun um someone asked somebody asked yeah what artists have influenced you over the years um so I love the impressionists I think that's they're the biggest influence um but I actually oh I don't know if I have the book because I've I've been carrying it around with me, but I love the work of William Wendt, which not a lot of people have heard of him. Um, he was a California artist, and I just would encourage you to look him up. He's an amazing landscape artist. Uh, I absolutely love his work. Um, and a lot of the impressionists that I like, I actually like their lesser known stuff, like Monet, yeah. I'm not really into like the lily pads and stuff. I'm like, man, I could, I could read uh, that. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, yeah, like, criticizing Monet, but I'm, you know, I'm like, it's not my favorite. That's not what hooks me for him. But, but I absolutely yeah. love Monet and I love some of his lesser known works. And do, do you, do you know that when he had a show in May, I think the 1890s, his works were going for I think between twenty and thirty thousand dollars in today's money. Wow! Like that, you just don't even think of. I I just didn't even think about that. And I watched a documentary, and I'm like, wait. And I did like the conversion math on what that would translate today for something. These weren't just little artists who were barely making any money. Like you know, I think Van Gogh is always like this this top one we always think about it's like no these these guys were <laughs> were bringing in some some good cash so <laughs> yeah yeah some of them were it's, it's some been of them. fun though to, not everybody yeah but, it's been yeah. fun to learn more about them i've really loved like digging into how um like how connected they all were how they worked together to support one another um even it's so funny reading about um I'm trying to think of who who it was. I think it I think it was Bert Morso and and um, Manet, who which she married Manet's husband, uh, brother. Her husband was Manet's brother, um, and uh, but they worked together sometimes in the studio. And she would finish a, a painting or would kind of ask an opinion from Manet about it, and then <laughs> Manet would come and just like start painting on her painting just like start redoing things and this is where you know and she just kind of sit back annoyed at it but i thought it was just so funny like i just don't know if i don't know if artists would work that way today <laughs> i mean i can imagine i i remember when i was younger and i was taking an art class and i was painting a landscape and the art the our teacher came over and said make your clouds like this and she did some she like fixed the clouds and i was so upset because i was like well they're just not my clouds yeah. now they're they're not mine you know like she did it like uh, like i brought the painting home and i was like oh it's so good i'm like yeah but they're not my clouds right <laughs> they're not my clouds. and i was like so mad like i couldn't imagine you know i mean but there was such a collaboration and such a like it's it's so interesting um but i also i love finding artists that other like william Wendt, that other people like unless you've heard of him no one's heard of him and yeah. um i love finding artists like that i have i'm i have a, i have another art i have an artist and i you know i don't want to screw up the name so I'll, i'm not going to say it and i'll share it later and i'll share it with you but there's a local gallery that has like they're like the experts on him. And he was in this whole mix of people too, with the impressionists and stuff. And you don't really know about him. And his work is amazing. Is it, it's absolutely. Is it Frederick Bazile? Okay. No. Uh, you don't, don't have to think of it. But Bazile yeah, actually I'll, was. I'll, I'll share it in stories, everybody. I, I promise. He was one of the first impressionists and he funded a lot of like, he worked with, uh, he worked in a studio with Monet and with Cicely and um because he was studying to be a doctor and his family was kind of funding him he yeah. he was basically yeah. paying for the birth of impressionism but he died in the war and um one of the you know france prussian wars one of those yeah. and he died at a very young age like 27 and so when you think about you know the impressionists you think like monet and renoir and all these and then 
but Bazile is is like super important in that. And and again, yeah, people haven't heard of him. But um, anyway, so, and, it's, it's, it's all so, interesting. Oh, it, we, we could go on and on. Yeah. About, about <laughs> um, somebody did ask, and it was so. I guess just share. I guess we'll share Michelle. Michelle, right? Yeah, Michelle um, Wooderson. Mich Michelle Wooderson. Yes. Yeah. Somebody asked about who you had taken classes with. Oh, um, oh gosh, I've taken classes with everybody. So some people I like, I really like Todd Casey. He um, has written a couple of books that are phenomenal on, um, he wrote The Art of Still Life and then he wrote The Oil Painter's Color. Oh, I'm sorry, Todd, I'm messing up your book name. Anyway, it's a book on color for oil painters. Um, he's a fantastic teacher, very technical, very, very like, traditional approaches um and i i really like learning from him uh his patreon is like eight dollars a month and he shares a lot so i learned from him um i've taken some classes on domestica which is with a k domestica and okay. um there are some wonderful classes on there that are like again like less than ten dollars a piece for a really good class um, I've taken a lot on Jean Oliver's website, um, and I feel like I'm missing some. And then I read a lot of books, like a lot. I probably have you, you, over, you I probably have almost 400 art books. Oh, wow. And now I haven't read every single word and every single one of them, but yeah. I have gone through all of them and read a lot of them. And do you feel, you feel like because I have a hard time like I can look at the pictures and I can look at what they're doing but it's hard for me to read about something that I need to physically do like I have to be shown physically how it's done and then do it myself before I actually get it you can actually figure it out from the words yeah. I, I, that's just a way I yeah guess, I think so. um there's so I had read a book about learning and there's different people <laughs> learn in different ways like some people yeah. learn by by seeing, some some by doing, some by hearing, yeah. some by speaking, some by writing, some by reading, or a combination of them. And I think um, I I learn very well by reading and writing. So okay. I'll read something, I'll take notes. Um, I like, I mean, watching people helps me too. It's kind of a combination yes. of the, of that. I love YouTube videos and video tutorials that people share, but. Um, Reading for me, I think it allows me to ingest it um, in my own time and I can go back to it again and again. I kind of remember like, oh, I, I read that in this book, so I'll, I'll put flags in it or bookmarkers in it so I can go back and revisit it. And um, yeah, it's it's just a way that I learn well. So yeah, it's it's not going to work. That's not going to work for everybody. For some people, that's you know, YouTube is going to be the way or taking an in person class where someone yeah. can physically show you with your setup yeah. what you need to do. Um, no, I just I think I think that's awesome. I love learn. I love seeing how people absorb information are actually able to to process that. So that's and I know you I you've shared your books and everything. So I was wondering about that. Now I'm going to ask you uh, we're probably going to get cut off. Um, so I want to ask the one last question all of your creativity all of the things that you've kind of brought forth into the world what have you learned the most what has been the most surprising thing that you've learned from all of it oh wow that's a tough question <laughs> <laughs> um i i think the biggest thing is that uh it, it's okay to try and it's okay to be good at something and not do it and it's also okay to be bad at something and just do it anyway like i i think um i'm far less concerned with, with what other people think about something being good or not i mean of course we all want affirmation and all of that but you know i really want to do the things that really feed my creative soul and that make me come alive in that season and that I really enjoy. Um, there's just no reason why I need to be like trudging through 
work I'm doing. I want to do my work with a real joy. And so, you know, when I felt like with furniture, it was really, I was trudging through it. It was starting to become hard. I had finished thousands of pieces of furniture and I was tired and it was okay to say, you know what, people loved this. I built a good following based on it. I'm making good money from it. It's a full-time job for me, but it's also okay to say, you know what, I've kind of, I've done that. It's okay to move on and do something different. And it's okay to then be new at that and to, you know, and I had to, there was angst there. I had to figure out like, how can I transition into something else? while still keeping income that I needed for my family. So it wasn't just totally like, oh, I'll just do whatever I want. Like there has to be some business sense in it. And there was, but yeah, I, I just have learned like, I don't know. And I, I think I've also surprised myself often. Like, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to be really bad at something and then like it's like oh it's a, it's okay all right like it's not good but it's okay <laughs> and, I, and I can like get through making bad things knowing that eventually I'm going to make something good and and that usually does happen like there's just kind of this tipping point where it's like oh now now I, I like what I'm doing <laughs> so yeah. um that's the biggest encouragement that I would give to people is that if you have always envisioned yourself like with a violin in hand or in front of an easel or painting watercolors, you know, on a vacation on the beach, whatever, like you've just like, I've always envisioned that for myself and I've always wanted that. I would just encourage you to do that, to do that thing. And it's okay. It doesn't have to be good or the best or anything. It's just something that's for you. That's fulfilling. And maybe you will be great at it. Maybe it'll become something that, you know, becomes a business or becomes something that you're known for. But, um, and also that it's just never too late. There's, I mean, so many stories of people who started things very late in life and yeah. ended up, yeah, ended up doing, you know, becoming masters of their field. So. Yeah, we always have tomorrow. You well, in a sense. You know, don't yeah. stress out. Don't stress out on it because, you know, I from where I started to where I am now. Even you know, we lived in an RV for two years. I had this little, this little area to paint, and now I have like I've taken over the shed. My husband let me take over the shed, and I have my garden. And I, you know, I couldn't ask for anything more. So whatever else comes from this, uh, so be yeah. it. Like I'm good with that. So um, I get to paint when I feel like it, and I get to go in the garden and do that when time's right too. So sure, would I love to have a big farm with a nice old farmhouse, but I also know how much work that takes, and I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know if I have the energy for that. Um, so yeah, but well, I, I know somebody else had just put in the question thing, so I don't wanna ignore them. Who was it she joins? Oh, the artist on Patreon. Who did you say? Oh, you Todd that? Casey. It's C-A-S-E-Y, okay. -E Todd Casey. Um, he's a, he is a great draftsman, great um, at color. I think if you really like, struggle with color mixing, he is a really good person to follow. Um, what I tend to do with like Patreon and stuff like that is I'll, subscribe to someone for like two or three, you know, months, and then I'll quit that. And then I'll subscribe to somebody else. So I, I like having a lot of different teachers so that I can, I'm not okay. too heavily influenced by just one person. Oh, the other one I took classes with recently was um, her Instagram is Jen, J-E-N underscore art. Okay. And she does amazing pet portraits. And I, I studied under her um, for hers is a monthly subscription. That's like, I think it's like 225 or something, but or 250. It's something something around that range. But um, it's live classes. So you can ask questions and you get feedback on your work. So if you're into like pet portraiture and her style, like that's a great um, she's a great one to learn from as well yeah a few people are yeah they know who she is, I so. I know yeah. who she is. her work is awesome. it's just stunning it really is stunning so it's been and again i think with every artist you just have to say like every class like 
I'm going to take what works for me. I'm going to take what I like, and then I'm going to leave what maybe feels doesn't feel authentic to my process. And I'm just going to yeah. leave that, but I'm going to take what I can learn. And I think that's what helps you learn from other people while kind of retaining your own, you know, your own yeah. voice. Agreed. I, I love learning. Um, I watched a lot of Dennis Sheehan videos. I don't know if you've seen him online, but that's where I was like, he gave me the permission without knowing it to go, Oh, I don't, I don't need to have a plan. Mm -hmm. I can just go a little, a little crazy and then find what's in there. And for me that, cause I get stuck in my head. So uh, that's a, that's a barrier for me. So if I can just kind of carve out and find what the brush strokes are leading me to that, that helps me a lot. So yeah. even just, okay, just one little thing I learned from somebody and then you just take it and go, f go that way and find something else. Yeah. And like you said, picking. Well, so. and I would recommend to anyone who wants to start painting or even painting with like a new medium or whatever, just like make it as low risk as possible. Like, I mean, you want to use good paints because if yeah. you use bad paints, you're going to set yourself up for mud. It's just not going to work. Yeah. Well, you know, it's going to be disappointing. So use good paints, but you really can, you really can get away with just three colors and white and you can make everything you need to make. And um, so make it low risk, like paint on cheap panels, paint on, you know, yeah. get cheap sketchbooks that you could just, you know, and a pencil that you can just practice in over and over again. And, um, you know, if it's low risk, then it's like, well, okay, I filled a sketchbook with a bunch of stuff I hate. Okay, <laughs> that can go in the garbage and I don't need to worry about it anymore. So exactly. that's what I would encourage people to do if they're interested in um, kind of tiptoeing in into art. I, I couldn't have said it better <laughs> myself. So is there anything that you haven't done yet that you want to try? I'll end with that. Oh, so so and many things. It doesn't have to, doesn't have to be yeah, painting so, or so many things. I'd I'd love to do. So I'd love to be a better gardener. So that I'm working on that. Um, I we have a house that we've been working on cleaning up the yard because it's just been very overgrown. But I'd love to, you know, be one of those people who's like, oh, the you know, this needs this soil or here's what this problem is. You know, anyway, I'd love to yeah. love to get better at that. Um, and as far as like artistically, I have the materials for it. I just haven't taken the time, but I'd love to get into like some etching and mono prints and silver point. Those are some things I've wanted to, to play around with, but I love oils oil. I'm just like, even though I've bounced around with a lot of different things, like oils are my absolute favorite. I wish that I could like paint with them in sketchbooks and then they would dry instantly when I want them to. Yeah. <laughs> And that would be a yeah, deal. like that's I all I would use ever is oils. Um, I I absolutely love them, and so I I don't see anything like eclipsing my love for oils anytime soon. But I I don't I don't I I agree with you there. I that's my my first love. I don't know. There's so, it's the history of it, the the smell. I know not all smells are good, but the smell, like the texture, the feeling, and nothing else. Yeah, me, for me, it's, and I didn't know this before, but it's more forgiving than a pencil. Like, oh. like a pencil, like you can only erase so much before the paper's damaged. But with yeah. with oil, I mean, you can scrape it off, put it back on, scrape it off, put it back okay. on, scrape it off. <laughs> you can paint over it. I mean, it's yeah. so, it's so forgiving. And um, I love the like juiciness of it. I, I just, um, I love how slow drying it is so you can get wonderful edges and um yeah i i absolutely love oil paint so, <laughs> yeah, so. I, it's definitely a, a love affair everyone like if you yeah i don't know there's just something uh, something about it so but yeah i feel the same way i'm sure other people yeah. do too yeah I think uh, so. So, so thank you so much sure. I really sure. appreciate you doing this with me. I'm just not sure when Instagram's going to cut us off. So yeah, it may cut I off just at, at an hour, so we're an probably hour. there. But um, anyway, um, thanks for everyone who joined. Yes, really thank you, everyone. A good conversation, and always good to talk to you, Megan. Yes, <laughs> you too. Thank you so much, All right, Marianne. have a good weekend, everybody. Bye. Bye.